This is Devon. They called Devon a miracle child. He survived a rare birth defect that almost cost him his life. In grade school, he was bullied because of a hearing impairment. He used sports to express himself. In high school, Devon only weighed 140 pounds, but that didn't stop him. The kids got hard. And this is Marshall. Marshall was always playing sports growing up and loved to ride a board or two. In high school, Marshall became a football star. He was big and he was strong. Dude had an NFL leg early. Devon balled out at Central High School in Baton Rouge, but no one offered him a scholarship. Instead, he walked on at Southern University, where his dad played. Marshall was all state in Florida and had colleges lining up. So he chose Georgia, where Mark Rick and the dogs had an opening. Kick after kick, he was automatic. And this is for a Georgia win. How about that? By senior year, Marshall was one of the best kickers in the country. And unlike other kickers, Marshall didn't shy away from contact. Devon didn't start in college, but took every chance to prove himself, especially in the big games, like going up against Georgia in 2015. That's when I met Devon. And that's how I met Marshall. I just seen the sky. I heard the band play. I was thinking, I have to get up. My team need me. I have to get up. Nothing was budging, so I was just laying there. We've got an injured Southern player on the field, and the Georgia athletic training staff first ones there, the near sideline to look after him. I actually saw the blow happen. His first one there, asked him what was going on, and he said he couldn't feel anything or couldn't move. I couldn't, I couldn't move anything but my hands. That's a scary feeling. Collision on the return. Right side of your screen, number 33, meets up with number 13. Collided at the end of the play with the guy who's been the best tackler on Georgia's kickoff coverage, the kicker, Marshall Morgan. Once I started jogging to the sideline, I look back and he's not getting up. And I, that's when I start kind of freaking out. Things are going through my mind, like it could have been this, this, what. I hope he moves, like, because at first he wasn't moving at all. Devon Gales, sophomore from Baton Rouge out of Central High School. Mark Rick just made his way over there. Scary moment. Yeah. Broadcaster came on and said that we have Devon Gale, Southern University wide receiver number 33, down on the field. Of course, my heart dropped. To see my son land there on that field, helpless, not being able to get up, it was, it was heartbreaking. I felt the pain hurt because I wasn't there. And they're going to cart the young man off the field. Our prayers go out uh, that everything's OK with Devon Gales. I was around 5'8", 158. So I was pretty small, but I was still big in the heart. It was a freak accident. Um, I, I actually hit him. 
I see Devon, he's running towards me. And so in my mind, I'm thinking, this guy's coming to lay me out. So I just tried to get a good base and just kind of almost absorb it. I wasn't looking to lay anyone out. The way we collided, um, it was it was tragic, I mean. Right at the point of impact, Devon actually lowered his head down and absorbed the blow. And, and the problem with that is when you lower your head, your spine becomes straight and it absorbs the force like a column. So uh, we knew he had a significant spine injury at that point. I was just telling myself, I'm going to be OK. I'm going to be OK. But my parents, I knew they were worried about me. Doctors told me I was paralyzed. One side of me wanted to cry, and the other side just wanted to stay strong for my family. He was able to move his hands. He wasn't able to move his fingers. But at the same time, nothing, he couldn't feel anything from his chest all the way down to his toes. The doctor told us that there was a 50-50 chance that he could walk again. I had to get a, a metal rod put back in my neck with uh, screws. I started to hear he could be paralyzed. I was like, this is way too serious. Like, this can't be happening. And I'm thinking, you know, his parents are going to hate me, that everyone's going to think I'm, I'm the guy that just, just paralyzed Devon kind of thing. Right then, I was like, I need to go see this kid, and I need to go see his parents. And I felt like I had to, like, apologize. The next day, he was undergoing some surgeries at the time. I go to the hospital, and I kind of walk up, and I see his mom. We wrapped our arms around each other and just start crying. I'm trying to hold this big guy up, and I'm like, OK, baby, you know, it's OK. You know, I just kind of had to comfort him and let him know that we don't blame you for any of this, and I don't want you to blame yourself. Some families, it could have been the totally opposite. And they're just the most loving and forgiving and, I mean, most welcoming family ever. This is just something that happens in football, but that's a heavy burden to carry. And as much as I could have spoken to him in his ear, I knew that he still had that blame on himself. You know, everybody had concern. If you're in the middle of a play like that, you can't help but be affected by it in some way. It could have gone either way. I wish it didn't happen to either of us. Get up. Mm -hmm. Therapy. Yes, you have some more shorts. I'm going to put them on. Because of Devon's injury, the Gail's family life actually changed just like that. I'm going to sit you up. All right, one more. <laughs> guy that's been through a, a rough injury that, you know, him and his family are probably going to need some help financially. And there's an opportunity to, to do that. And I'm, I'm calling all dogs to do that. Coach Rick, he said, regardless of the color of Devon's jersey right now, he's one of us. So whatever you need, he said, you have it. Baton Rouge didn't have a spine injury hospital. And in talking with everybody, we felt strongly that Shepherd was the best facility for him and the nation to go to. We're fortunate it's right down the street from the University of Georgia, so it, it was a nice fit. I have my low moments. Every day, I just wish I'm up and doing something I used to do. 
You say, Dad, I'm going to walk again. And I got to believe it. I can't have a daughter, my child. And, and my, me and my wife believe that he will. I miss football a lot. I had one day when I was like, man, I wish I, I wouldn't have hit Marsha. But you can't redo what's been done. After Devon was injured, I would always talk to Marshall just to check on him. Because I know once you're involved in a situation where you hurt someone, it's going to go through your mind. You can tell that it weighed on him a little bit. All the stuff that was going on in my mind, I was still thinking about Devon. As I read the season out, I'm getting updates about Devon's recovery. Every time I get an update, it's more positive. It's just a big motivator. Like, I was playing for him. I wanted to make him proud. Georgia Legion. You know, he really wanted to get a chance to meet Devon face to face and, you know, just, just sit down and just talk to him. We decided to invite Devon and his family down to one of our football games. That was the first time I met Marsha in person. gave him a big hug and was like, it's not your fault. That's when the guilt, the blame kind of just switched. From there, I was always just trying to reach out to him, and he would do the same. He would wish me good luck before games. It was just nice to be able to talk to him. That's really what started this relationship. And we just hit it off from there. He wanted to be there with me through this journey because it's not just mine, it's his too. He's strong as nails. I don't know if I'd be able to be as positive as he is. Him going through one of the toughest things that a human can go through. Got it, got it. You know, a lot of times people miss it. But then uh, as time goes on, you know, they sort of drift away. But Marshall kept in touch with the family, and, and they developed a strong friendship. When something happens in that magnitude, you, you tend to get to know people a little bit more because you're living through the pain and the hopeful victory in the end. And I just like hanging around him, hanging out with him. He's just an inspiration. I'm here for you, you're here for me. Just like a normal brother would do for your little brother. They bonded with this injury. It's something that we may not understand, but it's something between the two of them. Other than my wife's family, you know, my first invite to Madison and I's wedding was Devon. That meant a lot to me. And Marsha was like, can I push Devon in? And I'm like, dude, you're getting married. You're supposed to be standing there waiting to walk in. Oh, no, oh, no, I want to do this myself. I got to push him down and, you know, let people kind of just see how he is family. I felt a part of the family. I am part of the family. I posted a video of Devon's first time being in a set of robotic legs. Devon always said he will walk again. I said, even if it's not on his own just yet, this is just a small stepping stone. 
when it first happened, that's kind of what I was praying for, to see that he couldn't move at all much at first. And to see him like that, that's unbelievable. Get back on my feet a minute. Totally believe I'm gonna walk again. 10 times better than I was walking before. Devon kind of made me realize that, you know, there's more to life than, than football. Really, it's about relationships. He is the most positive, inspirational person I've ever met. I'm grateful that I was able to have a bond with him, heat him. Fate brought us together. He brought another light into my future. It made us brothers. <laughs>